Hello, I am here with another story. This one is called Stranger at the Spring, and it is by Tom Douglas. Many people take water for granted. You turn on the tap and out it comes. But my wife Robbie and I remember the days when water was not so easy to come by. During the Depression, Robbie and I and our two young daughters lived in a two-room house close to Robbie's father's farm in Daysville, Tennessee. I was a construction worker on a new road, and I was glad to have the job, even if it meant walking five miles each day. We had a big wood stove to cook on and keep us warm, but we didn't have electricity or running water. We washed with water from a nearby creek, but we had to carry drinking water all the way from a spring in the pasture. That meant walking some 300 miles up a hill and through a gate, filling a couple of two and a half gallon buckets and trudging back to the house again. It tired us all out, especially Robbie, who usually had the girls in tow. Still, we were thankful to God for what we had and somehow sensed that he knew what we were going through and was in it with us. One warm Saturday, Robbie took the girls to visit her parents, and I stayed home working in the vegetable garden. I was hoeing away, trying to get over feeling tired and discouraged when I looked up. A man stood in the front yard. He was tall and wore black trousers and the whitest shirt I had ever seen. Our house was isolated, and I always knew if anyone was coming, so I was surprised. Good morning, the man said in a deep, pleasant voice. I'm very thirsty. Could you give me a drink of water? Any drinking water taken from the buckets in our house meant we would soon have to climb up to the spring again, and even the thought seemed exhausting. But when it occurred to me that this stranger might be pretty exhausted himself, sure can, I said, shoving aside my own weariness. Want something to eat, too? Just water, he said. By now, our water supply had been sitting for a while, and I suddenly thought of how much a tired and thirsty man would like a drink of fresh, cool water right from the spring. So sit down and rest, I said. Taking a bucket, I'll get some fresh water for you. I climbed a hill, came back, and poured the stranger a tall glass. He drank it right down. Wonderful water, he said. Too bad you have to go so far to get it. It would be nice if the spring were closer, I said, but we have many other blessings. The stranger smiled, said thanks, and walked down the road toward Daysville. I stood staring after him, feeling good, and a little peculiar. <laughs> Where had the man come from? Where was he going? I had felt so peaceful in his presence. I hadn't even asked. But I could get him out of I couldn't get him out of my mind. I decided to go into town. Daysville was so small that everyone would notice a stranger, and I would be able to learn more about him. But my friends on the porch at the general store said I was the only one who had come down the road. We couldn't have missed him, they said. A few days later, there was a downpour. About 30 feet from the house, water began seeping out of the ground. When the rain was over and the earth dried, the trickle was there. I took the shovel and dug in. Water bubbled out, fresh and fit to drink. It was a new spring right at the spot where I first seen the mysterious stranger. Our new spring didn't go dry for the next two years. We lived there. After we finally moved, there was another downpour and the spring vanished. Years have passed. Today water flows right into our house, and yet I'll never forget that long ago source of refreshment and peace. The Bible says if you have done it, to the least of these, you have done it unto me. Well, I guess we did, and we get a wellspring in return. Amen. He helped Jesus. He gave Jesus a drink of water, and Jesus gave him a spring of water in return.
Amen.